in situations like we have in Nebula, where we have a completely new kind of task that, you know, maybe there, maybe we have some competitors out there that are trying to do similar kinds of things. Like, you know, going back to the untapped example, still today, a big part of our AI R&D involves finding the right people for the right job. And we can do that so much. I mean, we'd be completely, imagine if we could go back in time five years and mm-hmm. show the kinds of results that we have, we'd completely, it would completely knock our socks off. And LLMs play a big part in, in that. They, they're not everything. There's other tricks as well, but LLMs play a big part in us getting great match results back to our users. So what about, you know, you've, we've talked about leaderboards so far, but these leaderboards are relatively generic intelligence. How, yeah, do you have any thoughts on when you have some specific problem like we have? What would, yeah, what would you do? Well, the short answer is uh, that it's what uh, data scientists uh, like to call, uh, it's Im- empirical is what they sometimes say. That's right. Or it's, uh, uh, it's, such a, a, uh, it's such a sophisticated sound. Yeah, word. right. It's one that you have, to, you have to learn to say that to senior management, to executives. You say, well, that's empirical. Uh, or an area of active research is the other little expression. Uh, but what it means is there is a lot of trial and error involved. A lot of what you'll do, you'll, you'll look at these benchmarks that might help you guide you towards three or four models. Maybe you're starting with uh, Fi from Microsoft and Gemma from Google and, and a couple of others, maybe Quen from, from Alibaba Cloud and Llama uh, from Meta. And then you will build prototypes with a subset of your data and you will be measuring it against some of your outcome metrics uh, that we talked about at the beginning. Uh, and you'll be using that to help guide your decision towards which model to take. Um, and the same will apply for the different techniques. Like when you're thinking about, okay, am I, am I going to be doing fine tuning, working at, at training time? Or am I going to be working at inference time, working with RAG, uh, working with Agentic AI? Uh, it will, again, come down to some empirical work, some uh, trial and error. Uh, there are, you know, rules of thumb. If you're, if you're, focused on trying to improve the accuracy and special specialist skills, then, then it uh, tends to lend itself towards RAG. Um, we talked about some of the, the sort of pointers towards agentic AI before. Uh, so you'll use those to guide you. But at the end of the day, trial and error, try a few things out, see what yeah. results you And get. I guess in that context, I'd add a couple of things like you might need to create a test set, which depending on the task, you might need to create that manually, or you might need to you could actually use some of these state-of-the-art proprietary LLMs or the really big like Llama 3.1405B to be generating synthetic data that are relevant um, to your uh, test case. One thing that I would suggest that you be careful about in that circumstance is to be sure that your uh, simulated data cover the range of use cases that you anticipate your users will have. Mm -hmm. So if you were to naively go to Claude 3.5 Sonnet and say, you know, our kind of problem, say, I want to create a test set of jobs and candidates. Um, and I want you to, you know, come up with some kind of reasonable score, you know, for how well they match with each other. If you just naively do that, you could end up stuck in a relatively small part of the whole sample space that you might want all of your samples to come from. And so a cool trick here that, we've lever- that we have that we have leveraged at Nebula ourselves is to use real platform data to seed the simulation. So maybe you had users come in, so in our case, you could have a user come in and, and say, find me a data scientist in New York. That isn't a very rich query for testing our, uh, for our test data set, but we could have that be the starting point, that piece of information, and then um, Claude 3.5 Sonnet or whatever proprietary API or you know, some big open source model that you're using to simulate data with can, uh, can make a data scientist profile, can make right. data scientist jobs to match against or related jobs to, to score against. And then, so, then you're getting a real sense of, okay, you know, these are the users that we have. They, they cover this range of industries and you get that nice range of seeds that are representative of, of what your user base is looking for. It makes total sense. There's also, uh, there are some companies that specialize in helping with that process, both generating synthetic data and also in building real data sets. So there's Scale AI and now Scale.com that, that, that is uh, um, really great at that, and that's, that's what they do. Um, 
And that also gives me an opportunity to mention that they also have a leaderboard. <laughs> uh, I'm a leaderboard bore. Uh, so, so uh, the, there's a leaderboard. A, a leaderboard. <laughs> uh, so there's a, a leaderboard called the Seal Leaderboards, which they have made, which are meant to be about uh, specifically applying models to business problems. And they've got they've got a bunch of them. They they measure uh, things like uh, they've got one specifically for use of tools, which is really interesting. Which models are, are better? at being able to use tools. And they've got one really interesting one called adversarial robustness. And that is specifically testing models to see how good they are at refusing to answer questions that are inappropriate and not being allowed to be led astray. And that's particularly important and relevant because if, for example, you're, you're working on a chatbot that you're going to have as your airline's customer support chatbot, you want to make sure that people aren't going to be able to generate make a bomb. Yeah, yeah make, have it make a bomb, or you know, make something that's very memeable and is going to be embarrassing and be be posted all over the place. And so, knowing that you're picking a model that is strong in terms of adversarial robustness uh, is something that's very helpful. So, Scale.com generates test data is very useful for that, and also has some great business specific leaderboards. Nice S E A L. Any other leaderboards that we must know about, Edward? Well, <laughs> if you're going to open that door, uh, let me see. The, the, yes, there's one called Vellum. Vellum, in fact, I, I would say that the Vellum.ai leaderboard is the first, it is my first bookmark. It's my number one bookmark. It's the first one I have up because what Vellum has, which is really hard to find when you need it, is for all of the main frontier models, the cost, the cost per million right. input tokens and the cost per million output tokens mm -hmm. and the context window size. Uh, I uh, actually see it's off camera, but uh, <laughs> off camera, there's a laptop <laughs> that Ed left open while we're recording and it's on that vellum page. And so I've kind of noted it. It has context windows, model names <gasps> and input cost. Yeah, in, in terms of million tokens. And it's funny because as you were describing this, I was like, did we already talk about this on the show? Why am I so familiar with Vellum? And it's because I've been reading it's about right it over your there. shoulder. I am a leaderboard. It's <laughs> right there, always on my laptop. So yeah, Vellum AI, it's really useful. It also has a bunch of other things too. It has that BB hard metric that we mentioned before, uh, the future capabilities. And the great thing about Vellum, uh, comparing it to something like Hugging Face, is that with Vellum, you see both open source and closed source together. So you can see that some of the massive open source models like the Llama 405B that you mentioned is, is competing with frontier models. It's, it's creeping up the leaderboards. So it's, it's really useful to see it from that point of view. And I think, oh, well, there are a couple of other leaderboards. So there's a, there's a big code leaderboard from Hugging Face, which is one where you can see how good models are at writing code. And it doesn't just cover Python coding, which is a, a metric that, that many people know, but it also has Java coding, JavaScript, and C++. So it's another really good one. And then Hugging Face has a whole ton of leaderboards. They have leaderboards for, how, for medical models, models that are specialized in medical domain. Um, it has financial services leaderboards, uh, different uh, spoken languages, so, so Spanish, and Korean, and Japanese, uh, and vision uh, generating leaderboards. So Hugging Face has, has, has tons of these. Very nice. And I do see there's one more on your list that I'd like to call out, which is LMSYS. Yes. L-M-S-Y-S, which is really cool because that one, um, instead of having, so the, the evaluations are in head-to-head -head comparisons where human users evaluate whether, you know, output A or output B is superior given the query that they put in. And so it's, it's a more expensive leaderboard to run to be able to collect those data. And I don't mean that you're necessarily paying the users to come, but it's just, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's labor intensive. There's a lot of effort that goes into that, but it provides a unique, um, a unique perspective relative to a lot of the other leaderboards out there. And, uh, we have a whole episode actually about that, mm -hmm. which is for, so Joey Gonzalez, professor Joey Gonzalez was on the show. I don't know, maybe about a year ago now. And so we'll have a link to the show notes in the show notes to that episode for people to check out. And that I can mention that they've actually changed their name. It's oh. no longer called LMSYS. As of very recently, uh, they've just changed their name and it is 
as you're seeing, it's called LMArena.ai. LM mm. That is the new name of LMSYS. It's a better name. It, it is a better name, but yeah. LMSYS is so like we, we've, it's been yeah. around for so long and everyone yeah. knows LMSYS that it's hard to change that. But yes, it is now called LMArena.ai. And if you go there now, it's, it's such a great thing for, for everyone in the community to do. We can all contribute uh, to this arena by doing it ourselves and, and by going through and voting on a model. And I believe as of right now, the, the top slot is going to the very new version of Gemini 1.5 Flash. Oh, Gemini really? for the win. It's come right up to the top. Sorry, Gemini 1.5 Pro. 1.5 Pro. Pro. Uh, um, is uh, right up at the top. Um, and people think this might be a preview version of Gemini 2, uh -huh. which is expected in the next month or so. Uh -huh. uh, so right now, as, as of uh, the time we're recording this, it may have been dethroned by the time you, you listen to this. But as of now, that is at the top.